But the tree Nagori, here she is hitting that! And Charlie Grant has her first ever Matilda's goal. Welcome to Green and Gold with 10 News First, showing you the other side of the FIFA Women's World Cup right here in Australia. We're going to bring you all the weird and wonderful news and keep you updated on the World Cup that's unfolding right here in our backyard. To get started, let's take a look at the Women's World Cup by the numbers. If you love numbers and women's sport as much as I do, strap in because we're about to dive into all the numbers behind this year's FIFA Women's World Cup. 173 nations battled for a place in the 2023 Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. This has since been whittled down to 32 national teams, including eight who are making their debut this year. Over 1 million tickets were sold over a month in advance of the Games, smashing the ticket sales of the 2019 competition. Starting on the 20th of July, 64 games will be played at 10 stadiums across Australia and New Zealand. So how do we think the Matildas will fare? This will be Australia's eighth crack at the international tournament. Australia's top scorer in Women's World Cup history is Lisa Devanna, who racked up seven goals over three tournaments. But our current captain, Sam Kerr, is hot on her heels after scoring five goals in the 2019 tournament alone. Currently, the World Cup favourites are the US team, who have had 12 consecutive match wins over two straight World Cup titles. And Australia's best ranking in the competition came back in 2007 when we came, well, sixth. However, when we played the US team at the Tokyo Olympic Games, it was a real nail-biter, with the Matildas only losing by one goal at 4-3. And if we can stand up to the most prolific team in women's football history and give them a real scare, I reckon we have a pretty good chance this year. So, go the Tillies! And now for our trivia question to really put your football knowledge to the test. Our Matildas are stars in our eyes, but some of them are stars elsewhere too. Which former Matildas stars have also represented Australia in another sports World Cup? Lisa Devanna, Julie Dolan, Elise Perry or Melissa Barbieri? Hang around for the answer to this one at the end of this week's Green and Goal. And now for some real expert insight into the best moments of the FIFA Women's World Cup and the Matildas upcoming match against Canada, let's welcome 10 Football's footy fanatic Tristan McManus for three kicks. Thank you very much, Tristan, for joining us for some expert football opinion. You've been following this World Cup very closely. <laughs> yes, I have, yeah. It's been a great World Cup. I don't know about expert opinions, but I'll give you some sort of opinions and ridicule as you please. Now, you've been following Ireland particularly closely. How have you been enjoying their performance so far? It's been great. Look, at, uh, it's the first major tournament we've ever qualified for, which is a milestone in itself. And I think they've done themselves proud. I mean, we, we had a tough game against Australia at the start. I still think we could have taken something from it. But you can see the confidence that we had in the first half against Canada because of the second half against Australia. And then we got undone, little, little margins there to Canada. I still think if we had a held on, the first half against Canada, we could have taken the points in the second half. So I'm optimistic, and again, we have to be we have to be um, realistic about the levels that we're playing at right now. But Ireland always Ireland are a tournament team when we get there. Now it's been a particularly interesting group. I mean, looking at Australia's last game against Nigeria, that was an absolutely shock loss there. What can we take into tonight's game with Canada? I mean, look at in one way it was a shock, but at the same time it wasn't. You know, Again, in tournament football, anyone can win, you know, and, and I think Australia can beat anyone on the day. They're an unbelievable team. They really are. But they haven't shown their full level right now, and neither have Canada, and neither have Nigeria, and maybe Ireland have. But um, they just need that confidence going into it. Again, everyone gets injured. There's always injuries and things, and I think sometimes we rely too much on Sam K. I mean, she's unbelievable. Don't get me wrong. Of course, we know that. But I feel like when we put everything on Sam, well then there's a, not that there's a lack of confidence, but we need to realise that we have quality all over the pitch. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. It's, it's, we need people like Caitlin Ford to kind of step up a little bit more. Um, but she has that on her. You know, Hayley Razzo, step a little bit more. Alex Chidiak, again, my own opinion, Alex Chidiak needs more minutes. And, and I think we'll see an impact from stuff like that again. We've got Sam back, we've got Mary Fowler back. But we, we, we don't need to rely on them as much as we do, I think. So it's not so much injuries that might be our downfall, you're saying perhaps a mindset 
Yeah, I mean, it's hard to question a team's mindset because they have quality all over the pitch. But, um, yeah, look, injuries happen in football. That's what it is. But we need to know, right, well, what are we going to do if we miss out on her? You know, who's who's going to step up? And that's that's the quality that we have in the squad right now. And, and again, it's, I've never questioned someone's mentality, but I know we have the quality there. We have the quality to win with or without Sam. And looking forward to our game against uh, Canada tonight, what can we expect? What should we be doing differently? Um, well, I mean, what we don't want to do is panic. You know, like I said, we have to, we have to be patient when it comes to it. Um, nobody knows how Sam's going to play, if she's going to play or how much she's going to play. Like I said, Australia can beat anyone on the day. And, and, and we can, I guess we can take from this that the Canada that were gold medal winners, they haven't showed up just yet. Um, and we know that we have another level that we can hit. So again, if we, t if we, we don't need to panic. We need to win this game. Of course we need to win this game. But we don't need to win it in the first minute. We just need to win it over 90. And I, I, personally, I think we will. And I also think that Ireland are going to beat Nigeria. I know people will laugh at me. I feel like Ireland are going to beat Nigeria today and Australia are going to beat Canada. So very good day all round, but would this be a bit of a do or die match for Tony Gustafsson? Um, it could be, yeah, for sure. There's, look at the, it, it's always going to be. He always says, he talks about the World Cup, he's mainly talking about tournaments. Every tournament is a potential for a manager to, to, to win a crowd or to lose a crowd. Um, it is do or die, but, it, but every game is do or die. And every game should be do or die because they're the standards that we're working with. Um, yeah, hindsight is a great thing, and we all know what should have happened and when it should have happened. Tony's under a bit of pressure now, rightly or wrongly. We've got a habit of winning games, you know. We've won nine out of the last eleven. We can't forget that, you know. And we can put that down to the players. But decisions are made, tough decisions are made. We don't have to make the tough decision on Tony after this game. But again, if we win and we go on, I mean, what's going to happen then? No one knows. Plenty of food for thought here. Yeah. <laughs> now let's look forward to the game tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's going to be a great game. On the Australia. This Women's World Cup is for the next generation. So let's see what they have to say about having it right here in tomorrow's Tillies. So I'm here with Grace at West Torrens Bacala Football Club. Grace, how are you going? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How old are you, Grace? I'm 10. 10 years old. So the World Cup coming up, are you, you excited? Yeah, I'm very excited for it. Very excited. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Who's your favourite Matilda? Um, probably Sam Kerr or... Yeah, Sam Kerr. I've seen Sam Kerr do some pretty sick backflips. Have you ever tried one out? No. Are you ever going to try one out, you reckon? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Have you got a favourite Matilda? Mary Fowler. Mary Fowler, what do you like so much about her? Um, she's a great player. She's very smart and moves the ball really quickly. Who's your favourite Matilda? Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr, what do you like most about her? She scores goals. Heaps of goals. Can you do backflips like her? No. Have you ever tried? Yes, but I fell on my head. <laughs> Don't go doing that. Take care of yourself. So we're here with Audrey and Evelyn's sisters from the West Torrens Bacala Football Club. How are you guys going? Good. Yeah, good, thank you. Who are your favourite Matildas? Ellie Carpenter. Ellie Carpenter as well. What about Ellie do you love? Oh, I love that she always likes to go up and runs. Like She can really control the ball. And yeah, she's just an amazing player. Two sisters a year apart. Who's better out of you two, do you reckon? Me. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely me, yeah. Mm, not really. I'm way better actually. A little birdie told me that you've been hanging out with the Chinese national team. Is that true? Yes. What was that like meeting them? It was really cool. I got to ask them tips about if you want to become a national or international player. And I got to learn like lots of things from them. So you're going to get to any of their games in the World Cup? Uh, yeah, I'm going to the China versus England game. Who do you think wins that? Mm, I think it'd be a tough one, maybe China. A little birdie told me your dad used to play football himself. What's his name? Uh, Brett Burden. Brett Burden, the bird man. He used to fly high for marks back in the day. Has it given you any tips that you can bring out in the soccer field? Um, well, just give my best and always have some goals that you do. So no speckies out in the soccer field? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. What position do you play on the field? Um, I play right wing or striker. Right wing or striker, so you score a lot of goals. What's your favourite celebration? Give my teammate high five. High fives. High fives? A lot of team players out here. A lot of team players, not my style. All right, so I'm going to give you this microphone. I want you to look down the camera and give the Matildas a good luck message. You ready? 
Alright, here you go. Good luck Matildas and bring it home for Australia. Good luck Matildas, you got this. Go the Matildas, you got this. Win some games, score goals. Good luck Matildas, I'm all for you, you got this. Our team spoke to some of Nigeria's biggest fans just before their match up against the Matildas at Brisbane Stadium. Let's hear what they had to say. It is huge for us because when you're outside of your country, it's very important to build a community and build like sort of a home for yourself outside of home. And for us to have our actual home players be here with us, it's, it's beautiful. We're so excited. And this is the first time I've actually seen a lot of people like gathering to like support the women's team. It's really beautiful. You know, like we, they don't even get that much sponsorship or that much recognition for the work they're doing and how much they're bringing like, the Nigerian name out into the uh, international world. Yeah, we're really patriotic, as you can see. So <laughs> yes, whether they lose or they win, like we're supposed more likely to win. win. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely gonna win. Yes. yes, especially as a woman, it's just amazing to see women that come from the same country as I am doing something great and like being in the same space in the same country, um, like you know, actually making a name for our country and stuff. And so I'm just there to support, you know, all the way. Yeah, and although we, like, call Australia home, yeah. um, we're always Nigerian. We're first okay. and we'll always be Nigerian. So I think it's just a thing of joy um, just to see representation for all the Nigerians who've grown up in Australia. And just seeing our, like, it's just so much pride and joy just to see our... Um, our team on like the Aussie soil like I think that's just a thing of pride and joy they've got resilience they've got strength like they've got the um, determination on the side yeah. we're like we're classified as the underdogs so I think they have that to push them through so I think we're going to do amazing yeah. regardless of the results so, I feel yeah. like even though the Matildas have like the whole of Australia like the Nigerians it is our community well, 100 times we're ready to up. show up at that yes. stadium okay? yes. you better be scared and yes. run for the hills <laughs> <laughs> women's football is booming in popularity but did you know it was banned for decades in Australia? Tatiana Carter took a look at the women who fought to get back on the field. Did you know that Australian women were banned from playing football from 1920 to 1970? It's hard to believe that now with fans gearing up for the FIFA Women's World Cup and our Matildas standing proudly as one of the powerhouses of international women's football. But it took a historic effort for our female players to get where they are today. Ladies football teams were beginning to pop up in 1903, but these loosely formed clubs would go public in 1921. The first major public women's football game in Australia drew a crowd of over 10,000 people and was played at Brisbane's Gabba. With momentum beginning to pick up in Queensland, the first ever women's team was formed, the Latrobe Ladies, and later the Queensland Women's Ladies Soccer Football Association. But this success was short-lived, as the English Football Association would soon ban the sport for 50 years. While not a ban on the game itself, women would not be allowed to use association grounds for matches. The FA argued that it was medically inappropriate for women to play, as they could damage their reproductive systems. Thankfully, all of that changed in 1974 with the formation of the Australian Women's Soccer Association and an invitation to play an international tournament in 1978. The rest, they say, is history as women's football in Australia continued to grow and develop a proud legacy, including championship wins, Olympic glory and sellout crowds. And we're back with the answer to our trivia question, which is, of course, Elise Perry. She won two Women's World Cups with the Australian women's cricket team, as well as six T20 World Cups and scored a Commonwealth Games gold medal. That's it for this episode of Green and Goal. Make sure you tune in next week for more cup fun. Go the Tillies!